All right, so the first little clip while I uh, wait for you guys to give me some questions here. Um, I'm gonna let a couple of them build up if you guys wanted to ask anything. I'm just gonna go over a quick little tool ordeal. Uh, so here is the stock, you know, untouched one. That's the way they start. And I've actually changed my technique. Instead of heat heating it up to soften the steel, I found that if I just scratch the surface of the coating, I can get past the, the hard spot. So it's like it's just a, a surface harder and the rest of it's not that hard. So here's what I do with the sander. I just hit that, that little edge. And then I go ahead and I mount it up in here. And you can see, oh man, there's a lot there. All these metal shavings, because I have a bit under here that I'm cutting these with. And after I do that cut, I end up with this, where it's got this little shoulder down here. And this is the, you guys that in a minute, but first I'm gonna run through the last little section of these here quick. And then uh, perhaps I'll check the questions after I do that. paper here. So there's that pass on that. That one is done with that part of it. And I got a few more to do. I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys a view of the cutter tip. Right, so you guys can see it actually do the cut. That might be kind of neat, neat for you. Now, if you heard that little chatter, that was what's uh, what's called a bit chatter. My feed speed wasn't correct, but uh, it gives it a goopy lump right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and that's why I have a file right here. Clean that up. I'm doing this part of the video here is because I have a lot of people request a, a double-edged you know make sure I get it taken care of scenario make sure that people are well aware of what's going on with making this unit that way they can make it themselves more here now I'll get to any questions that have popped up 
give you guys a little bit different view as well. As you can see, I kind of got this system down pretty good now to where I can make them relatively quick anyway. This is way faster than trying to sand them like I used to. I've been getting a lot of requests for these tools. A lot of people are ordering them. I'm going at least one a day, seems like. in mind any questions that you might have I'm open to anything anything about cars in general I don't need to stick strictly to displacement on demand I know a lot of you have joined because of that video performance questions diagnostic questions uh, anything you can think of Maybe why your car does a certain thing, maybe a noise you hear, if you can somehow describe it, which is usually really difficult via messaging. But uh, anything of that nature, I am open to. Oh, I hate this thing. So this, look at this. See all those teeth chewed off? It's like, I, I bought this special one, it was from, uh, uh, what's the place called? It's down in Pennsylvania. But uh, it, it doesn't quite fit really well, so it'll, it'll kilt, and if I don't hold it tight enough, it'll break a tooth off. It drives me crazy. I'm gonna have to order a new one just so that I can uh, modify it to make it work better or something. It drives me nuts. I suppose I better do a audio check, make sure the audio is okay too. Uh, just let me know in the messages, somebody. gave me the goofy edge. All right, one more, and then I can get to your questions for a little bit. Where did I put the... Oh, there it is. Losing my stuff again.
I know I have a couple of uh, machinists on this channel. You guys have commented on here before. If you happen to be watching, let me know what you think of this little jig that I came up with. do I have here? 19 of them, good. That'll last me a little while at least. Just gotta grind the ends. Let's go see what kind of you guys have. Okay, I know he was one of the first that, where's my mouse? Where did my mouse go? There it is. He was one of the first that commented, I believe, so it's not, yeah, not. Okay. How did you do your plug? Okay, for the Vlam, right? Is a good question. Okay, so I'm getting asked about the plug unit that I use to plug the oil, the, the oil pressure sender where the hole is that feeds the Vlam. Um, I can actually go over that. I believe I can, if I can find the piece that I have laying here yet, I do have a Vlam as well. Uh, I have all the measurements on my Vlam mod video. Uh, it'd be best if you just went back to that if I can't find it. I'll take a quick look, but I'm not going to sit here and search for it on a live stream. You do not have to put the oil screen back in. Another guy was asking me as well on that uh, Blom plug ordeal, uh, how to put a manual gauge on there. I don't know why he would want to do that, but uh, as far as the manual gauge goes, you still have the same hole because there's a hole in the center of the, the piece that I put inside the Blom, and that hole is going to allow oil pressure to feed the sensor. It just won't allow oil pressure to feed the Blom internal parts. So whether you remove them or cut the gasket, whatever you choose to do, uh, you're not going to be feeding oil to it, thus not allowing the lifters to collapse. I just recently had a call, so might as well give you a little backstory here. Uh, about a year and a half ago, maybe a year and three months ago, give or take, when I was Silverado, but I this was before I discovered, and actually the vehicle I discovered the problem on originally. Now, the vehicle came in with a misfire, collapse lifter, same thing that we've been dealing with on this channel for a long time as far as a solution to it. Now, this was before I knew the little trick. And I went ahead, I replaced all 16 lifters. I did the cylinder heads, did the whole nine yards, right? And I just got a call yesterday from that shop saying, hey, the guy's back. He's got a misfire cylinder one, three, four, and seven. And... I think the three misfire is going to be unrelated. It's one of the lower count misfires, but four and seven are misfiring. He also noted that it was completely covered in sludge, and it wasn't a stuck lifter this time. This time, it was as if the Vlam was activating things. So when I did this vehicle, it came back a week after I had done all the lifters, and I discovered that, that hit the lifter trick. Uh, 
so that hit the lifter trick that I discovered worked until now but he noted that it's extremely sludged up in the engine like this guy is not maintaining his engine at uh, so I had him turn the motor over manually to see what would happen and the rocker arm would work or well he also first first I had him do it so that he would just put the rocker on once the cam lobe was up I had him take the rocker arm off get the cam lobe up and then he put it on and it pushed the valve down right so we know if you were to manually turn this thing it would work it was locking up so this morning hopefully he's working on it uh, but I'm hoping that he's gonna find out that that Vlom somehow malfunctioned and is allowing oil pressure into the passages um, because this was before I did any kind of Vlom modification obviously I just recently discovered doing that so this guy has gone I think it was 60,000 miles and hasn't had a problem until now but he hasn't also maintained his engine at all he hasn't been doing his oil changes like he should the engine's complete filth he said it just looks like it's a nasty Pennzoil uh, stereotypical Pennzoil motor where it's just sludge everywhere he said it's just disgusting so I would assume that that has a huge part to do with the problem now what I'm really curious about and I'm hoping that he pulls the Vlom off and, and looks things over and finds out that it's feeding pressure. Uh, I'd actually like to get a hold of that Vlom kind of. I should probably contact him this morning yet. But uh, if I can get a hold of that Vlom, I'm curious why it would fail. If it's not being activated, because that system is disabled. It's not being activated. It should not have a problem. I don't know. Maybe there's just so much sludge in that motor that feeding through those ho oh, ah, feeding through the holes past the lifters it's actually plugging the screen I'm gonna go grab the blonde clip so I can show you so here's the blonde right and those tower holes they feed this and it's supposed to bleed out here and then bleed past here I'm wondering if it's not so incredibly dirty that it's plugged the little screen that's in this and then there's also a screen before this and I'm wondering if it's plugged both those screens to the point that it's actually causing it to lock up or, or, or collapse the lifter because it's seeing oil pressure there, which is what activates these lifters. So just a little interesting update on what's been going on with these systems as far as the long-term effects, because this was, like I said, it was over a year ago, probably a year and three months ago that this happened. All right, I'm going to be right back. I just got somebody that walked in real quick. Well, that certainly works for me. They brought me coffee, so that makes me happy. I love my coffee. All right, let's see if we got any more questions. Oil screen definitely stays out, Ricky, as far as uh, once you plug that blom up, like I just had stated. The ATF flush, yes, very, very good. I'm going to do that live. Uh, not the flush, but I just did a flush, and I have the video in process of needing to edit. I have not had any time to edit. Uh, you can see this motor right here. This is in process of assembly. It's getting ARP studs cam, that kind of crap. It's actually, sorry for the little delay. It's actually for this GTO here. Uh, I have a lot of things going on right now. I've been very busy. And uh, I haven't had time to edit videos. I have just files and files upon files of videos uh, all over the place. But with that, let's, uh, let's swing over here quick. Make sure you're aiming decent. Sorry about all the shake. There we go. I have, there it is. These oil filters right here. Now, if I can set up my other camera uh, where is that? It's over here. So let's go ahead and cut these open. Hopefully nobody's wearing headphones. Sorry. I'm going to wipe this out at least a little bit and get it somewhat clean. It's covered in dirt, but we'll still be able to get the idea anyway. So what I do need to do, though, I wonder if this sticks to a magnet. I need to have my other camera doing it too. Of 
course it doesn't stick to a magnet. I bet you I can put a bolt in there. Mm, spur of the moment things, right? Aren't they great? Pretty sure it's just a 3 8 or 5 16 bolt. So while I set this up, um, the ATF flush on the engine, there's a couple ways to do it. Uh, being your own personal vehicle, it's very easy to just, when you do your oil change, add a half a quart of ATF and just do that throughout your oil changes for a long time. If you don't want to clean it fast, you just want to take your time and clean it and just change your oil every 3,000, 2,500, 3,000 miles, something like that. That's a very easy, simple, relaxed way to do it. You don't have to go through a bunch of extra time and energy messing around with changing filters and stuff. But it's it's gonna take a lot longer to get it clean. Uh, the other way is like I did here. Of course, now the battery's dead, right? Oh wait, there it goes, okay. Uh, but what I did here, oh, look at that, that works perfect, slick. recording too now. Hopefully it's got a good angle. I would think so. There goes that tool. Anyway, so one of these filters was on the vehicle to begin with and uh, I, let me think, I gotta, I gotta try and recap. I know the video will cover it so I'll have it there. Um, oh here, I know how I can tell. I'll just pour some oil out. Okay, so one, one was on the vehicle, as is, did not mess with it. I pulled it off, put a new filter on, drained the oil, filled it with ATF, and uh, then I put this filter on with the ATF, and then I changed the oil again and went to the regular oil with, I believe, three quarter of a quart or one quart of ATF in replacement for another quart because I wanted him to get more time on it. Now this vehicle, I only ran it for two and a half, three hours. I didn't have near the time. I normally like to go four to six hours with straight ATF in the engine. I'll run that for, you know, like I said, four to six hours. But when I'm running it, I'll check the oil pressure once it's warm, take note of it, and then bring the RPMs up nice and smooth. Just let it do a nice smooth sweep up and down a couple of times and that makes sure that any variable valve timing, if your vehicle has, it gets activated. Uh, it splashes oil further out to make sure it gets the transmission fluid kind of everywhere to start the cleaning process. And then uh, I'll do that every hour-ish, half hour to an hour. And every time I come out, before I do that, I check the oil pressure. If the oil pressure has dropped any uh, reasonable amount, that means the filter is likely to be plugging up and you need to change the filter in the midst of your transmission flush scenario. So where is my cutter? I have a, there it is. I have a filter cutter here and uh, later on I'll try and throw a link on this video. But uh, we'll go ahead and cut these filters open. So this one had two to three thousand miles on it, I forget as far as the mileage on the vehicle before I pulled it off. And then the other one, of course, that's only three-ish, two and a half, three-ish hours on it. And now we'll actually see the quality of oil, too. Oh, I do want to note, this had low oil pressure. I did not like the oil pressure. Every time I revved it up, the oil pressure would not increase with this filter. Um, I think this is the filter, unless that was the guy with the pens oil. I don't know, I do too many jobs, I can never remember. But uh, this filter here, I believe was the one that was restricted and why I ended up suggesting the flush. Okay, 
I'm gonna bring you guys closer after I grab a rag here. I better go grab a couple of rags now that I think about it. Otherwise I'm gonna end up covered in oil and creating a mess. All right, we have our array of rags here. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna get clean cups too, two clean cups. That's mad, it's kind of dumb. All right. So we have two nice clean cups here. We're gonna go ahead and pour these one at a time into the cup and compare them. My phone just dinged, I'm not sure. I'm sure you guys can hear that. I remember the last live stream, I noticed that it was able to be heard, which I thought was weird. All right, so this is an interesting filter compared to what I'm used to taking apart. It has like a felt material. It's almost like those cheap cartridge filters you get in the little GM Ecotech four cylinders, only even cheaper than that it looks like. All right, set that on there. And this is, wow, an extremely cheap filter. So these Valvoline filters are just crazy cheap. That is a pretty poor quality filter right there. Oh my goodness, it's even got the plastic build inside. Yes, there is a difference in filters when you buy filters. There is a huge difference in quality. The pleats are even thin. This, is, this doesn't have much material here. We're gonna have to compare this to the other one. I'm going to go get a light, too. I can't see very much here. Okay, so I'm wondering if I could show you guys this. This is, is actually plugged up a little bit. Uh, I'm going to try and get you guys over that where that light is so you guys can see a little bit better here. It's definitely an interesting little thing of note. Where's the camera? That side. All right, let's see if we can see this. So you see the small little chunks that are in there, kind of all over the place? Those little chunks are what's plugging up these pores. That and the super fine stuff that you can't even see in here. But look at how cheap this, this felt, oh look, it just, it strips from the filter. It just, gar oh, it gets glued pretty good there, but that part wasn't even hardly glued on there. So you can see how cheap this filter is made. Now, before I do that, I want to pull the other one apart because I want to compare how thick this filter element is to that cheapest filter I could get at Napa. And we'll compare the cheap Napa filter to this. Now, Wix filters are an amazing filter. Those things, are, they have like a wire mesh and everything in there. Really good quality filters, especially the Wix racing ones. Better move my other camera a little bit. A similar point of view here. A little bit closer to the action because that camera has an extremely wide angle. Now I've had you guys requesting a lot of closer shots. Um, with the camera gear that I have, it's very hard for me to do that. I don't have very good gear yet. I'm still waiting for YouTube to make me enough money to be worth the investment in gear. So you can see I'm pouring this nasty oil into here. What I want to do is I want to look at the bottom of this. It's usually a, a telltale sign of problems in the motor is the bottom of this will have chunks of metal or nasty nasty debris if it's just a dirty motor because it all settles out as the vehicle sits on these things so there's their little spring loaded die there's not even a spring in there holy crap so so the rubber is the spring for this one oh and look at the sludge at the bottom look, look at this grow that's just just nasty for only I think this was two two to three thousand miles I don't remember exactly it might have only been two but Either way, that's that's pretty gross. Okay, so there is that filter. Now we'll do the one that's barely a few few hours old as far as runtime. <laughs> Bet you guys got that bling too, huh? Getting too covered in oil, it's slippery. Oh, it's got a lot thicker shell on this filter. I would have thought a Valvoline filter would have been a little bit better, but I suppose that's their budget filter for the quick lube shops. 
most likely. Oh, there goes my air compressor. Hopefully that doesn't make it too uh, loud for you guys. I'm gonna disconnect that hose so it doesn't do that again. You can already tell it's a lot better quality. Way thicker material. That's sad. This is Napa's cheapest filter you can get from them. Okay, so this thing is really chintzy. Really chintzy. But they have a much better oil control flap for the back feed of the, the oil flow. Go ahead and look in these cleats once, see if we see anything. Okay, so there is some dirt debris in there. See a little bit of chunks in there. Move this over. But I don't know, open another section. Got to move that oil out of the way. So there's a little bit, not much, not a huge amount. But we do have some in there. Okay, so that's the Napa filter. Now, look at this. The pleat thickness. This this thing is containing the pleats. Look at the difference in how thick it is. There's much more pleat material here and the length as far as that goes. So that's that's an interesting thing. Plus, we have the metal structure on the inside, so less prone to cracking and collapsing if, if it were to sit for a while. The spring is built into the bottom here. I'm not sure how that works. Oh, there's actually a, a valve here. That's interesting. That must be, uh, if this gets plugged up enough, it'll bypass so your engine still gets oil. That must be what that's for. That's interesting. There's definitely some chunks in here, though. So I did do it, do it clean, and you can see how clean the fluid is because it wasn't that old. Go ahead and pour this in a cup now. Okay, so you can see it's not pink like uh, regular ADF. Is. There goes that spring in the bottom, an actual spring. But look at the bottom here. So that's what the ATF had cleaned out of this thing. There's all those chunks in there. So, there's that. I better do this camera too, huh? I'm probably going to go over this a little. But, that is definitely interesting. Where did that spring go though? Oh yeah, and the fluid here. So we'll compare fluids here as soon as I get this back together. I don't want to lose track of everything. Now my hands are just covered in oil. Okay, so this guy said, oh wow. I'm going to show you the bottom of this. If I can get a good angle, there we go. You can see how the oil is flowing at the bottom there, but it's not flowing at the top. That's because that top section is sludge. Let's see if I can get a good view for you guys there see I'm pulling that away nasty just nasty so there's that oh look at this you see how coated that is too that's kind of gross so we'll set this cheap extremely cheap filter back together I've never seen one that cheap it's crazy what is this what in the world That must have came off the uh, filter. Weird. I have no idea what that is. It's just plastic. Okay, here is... Oh yeah, that's the regular oil. You can see its color. Not too bad. I mean, it's dirty, but not too bad. And then here is the ATF. Much more clear, but with a little pink color to it. But look at the bottom of the jug. Uh, too much glare. I can't get a can't view for you guys. Uh, 
Uh, let's pour a little bit back into the filter here. I noticed something when I was doing that that you guys probably can't see. I don't know if you guys can see that, but there is little chunks of dirt in the bottom of that. So, anyway, there's that. I just thought that'd be an interesting thing to do on camera quick while I was live. Might, might be helpful, let me know. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and check those comments again here. All right, what do we have? We have a few. Greg, I think I got skipped. Let's see here. Change my, okay. Good morning, he says. I recently changed the O-ring on my pickup tube. 5.3 Vortec, I was driving to work this morning and got a low oil pressure warning again but the gauge needle was up and down. What's going on here? My mouse is, I'm losing my mouse. No, oh, whatever. Okay, I'm gonna, the reason I read it out loud, uh, my other live streams, I wasn't doing that and I need to because the other people don't know what question I'm responding to. So I just wanna make sure I cover that quick. Uh, okay, so your oil pressure is fluctuating. I think it might be the sensor. Did you do anything with the screen? Driving to work. Yeah, he says nothing about the screen. Did you say anything before me? I better double check. I don't see it. Um, okay, so you changed the O-ring. It's fluctuating. And he's wondering if it's going to be the sensor. It very well could be the sensor. Uh, the sensors on these things are just kind of pieces of crap. They fail pretty often. That's why I always pull the cover off the back of the intake when I service these things. Whenever I have the intake off, I pull that cover off, throw it in the trash because it makes the sensor a easier to work on. Uh, so it's very, very possible, but make sure you check the screen in the VLOM and make sure that's not plugged up because that will cause uh, bad oil pressure readings as well. On the lifter. I'm trying to, I'm trying to <laughs> uh, reinterpret this question here. Okay, he took the oil pan off, and it was slow to strain. I'm trying to. Oh, he had to clean the strainer. I think that's what he's getting at. Change the O-ring to get oil pressure. Then I released the new collapsed. Then the lifter trick. Okay, so he did the lifter trick. Hopefully it worked. Um, actually, I think I think he's one that I sent the tool to. That, that name rings a bell. Uh, I cleaned everything to shiny new before I installed the new O-ring and drove it fine for four days, then dropped again. Oh, so you were actually... Okay, so it was good, and then it, it was doing this before. It was actually dropping just like that before. Uh, I wish I had the oil pan off of this one. Trying to think if I have an oil sump here or not. Well, I have a BMW one I can maybe use. Hang on. It's, it's, it's not exactly the same, but it'll work for describing to you guys. All right, so the oil sump on the vehicle, on the GM, but this flange only has one bolt hole. The oil pump itself has two bolt holes. There is a problem that's been known for a while now where some vehicles in particular, I don't know which ones, but they don't have very good bracing for this sump that is usually pretty long. Now this motor, it's not because the GTO has the pickup on the front of the pan. And because of that, it's got a short pickup. But when they have that long pickup, they're not braced very well. And being it only has one, sometimes bouncing around when you're uh, just driving normally, it'll fatigue the metal and it'll start to come down and then that o-ring will it'll drop because the the pump is not designed to pump air so it's a very common known problem and there's a fix for it it's like a a little billet bracket the performance type websites will out oh excuse me will offer it and it's like a little bracket that utilizes the other bolt hole 
to help clamp that thing down. I put it in all my performance applications that I build whenever I build a sump. This is the only one that I didn't recommend doing it because it's such a short sump, I don't see it being a problem. But anything that has a decently long sump tube, uh, it can easily flex because they just have these little tin brackets that bolt to the mains, like these little studs that stick off the main caps, and they're just not very strong. So they tend to flex and cause failures. Yeah, the ATF, the ATF trick is amazing. The screen was cleaned as well. Okay, so it's not the screen. Maybe a seafoam will fix it. Okay, so Greg, on yours, does the oil pressure work fine when you first start it up and then suffer, or does it suffer right out the gate and then get better when it warms up? Basically, I'm going after how thick the oil is when it's affected. Does it just kind of come and go randomly? Does it work better in certain situations than others? Uh, go over that once and see, see, maybe I can help you then a little bit better. Maybe get a little bit better idea of what's going on. Any kind of little things you can do to help me help you. So I got a grain, a few more. If you guys have more comments, I'll uh, come right back to them. Uh, I don't know, I suppose I could give you a little history too. You guys all right? <laughs> Did you live down there? <laughs> oh no. Are, are you guys okay? <laughs> you didn't get any concussions, did you? <laughs> Ouch, exactly. Is my phone okay? Apparently I'm still live. Well, that was not expected. I might as well leave the light on. This is like Motel 8, we'll leave the light on for you. Okay, where did my safety glasses go? All right, so a little history on me quick. Um, I just remembered, I, I wanted to talk to you guys about this anyway. So, I started my life as a radiator repairman, believe it or not, as far as my, my fixing career goes. Um, I've always been into fixing things, but uh, I started off at a radiator shop did a little bit of car work here and there and was going to college at the same time for auto repair. And uh, when, I, when I did that, it seemed like I ended up teaching the kids that were there more so than anything. I actually got yelled at by the teacher because I was answering all the questions, whereas he wanted the other kids to, I, I just kept spitting out the answer because I knew the answer. And uh, it's kind of a funny deal how that worked. But anyway, later on, I ended up with a job at a local shop. Then I ended up at a job that was about a 45 minute drive after I got sick of getting screwed over by that shop. Um, they were screwing me on my pay, basically. And it, long story short, I, I wasn't gonna have it. So I ended up going to another shop called Bobby and Steve's. Now, it's a pretty big company here in Minnesota, at least. And uh, you may or may not have heard of it. They've thrown ads around and they got quite a few places. Uh, but I worked there. I ended up with the knife. I was getting paid really well when I was working, but I wasn't working very often because I didn't have much work at night. And so I decided to stray away and I ended up becoming a lead tech over at another shop. And at that shop, I was doing pretty good. My, my pay was here and I mean, it was okay. I was happy, but I just didn't feel quite happy enough. And so I decided to start my own gig and do my own thing. And I slowly progressed from that shop into my own business where I am now. And I've been here for only about a year. But I've been doing the repair thing since 2002-ish, give or take. So I've been working for quite some time. I just figured I'd give you guys a quick little history on that while I uh, go ahead and do this. I'm going to grind these things. Now I'm going to hold these at a 45. So about there, and I'm just gonna work it back and forth. I'm gonna do, I don't know, a few of them. And then I'm going to use my, my die grinder to do those ones that I do. I'm not gonna do all of these on camera because I don't want you guys to sit here and watch me do this forever. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just do a few of them because I do need to get a couple out in the next couple days here. So I'm gonna do that and you guys will be right back.
Okay, so the bit that I'm using for this is just a little sander disc. And it's definitely smaller than the diameter of the lifters themselves, but the goal is to get the contour to be the diameter of the lifters. So here is the lift. Get this one to start in the center, and then I'm gonna go ahead and round the sharp edges off of here as well. And again, 45 degree angle, just like before. I do it by hand, believe it or not. So there is the pre doing the little cutter, and this is the post after. And now you can see the holes. They have those burrs in there. I have to get that out, then I have to clean this out so no metal ends up in an engine. And I don't know where my bit is for that, but I will find it soon. So this is a chamfer bit, basically. And you can see it's got just a one cutaway on it. Now I have one that has multiple deals too, but that one always chatters on me. It's real hard to make it not chatter. Uh, it works good for this. Uh, I just don't see it right at the moment. This one I saw first, and obviously you guys are live, so I'm not gonna sit and search for a tool. Both of them work fine. But all I do is I take that, I run it in the hole. Definitely doesn't work as good as the other one, but it does work. A little brake clean. Wow, I didn't get it all. Still got one little slag hanging up. Oh, there it is. It was ready to come out. It must have just been stuck. Now, I always do this before I call it complete to make sure I don't see anything in there. Okay, just look through it. Looks clean, good to go. Come on, focus. There we go. There is the finished end of the tool. There's the step, and there's the end you hit. All right, let's see what we have for some last questions before I take off here. Sign off. All right. Got a lot of comments. I got to figure out what's, where was I? There we go. All right, Ricky, you say you can buy HP 250 and do it yourself. You're half correct. Uh, you could buy HP tuners for 250 bucks, but that normally does not come with the universal credits. You normally have to pay 350 to get at least the two credits, about 350, and uh, those credits are what's needed to disable the displacement on demand. 07 to 09 for sure. Some of them up to 11 require two credits. I think the newer ones all require. Uh, three credits, but I'm not totally positive. There's all kinds of weird little modules and things like that that HP makes sure that they hit. Uh, but I just recently, uh, earlier in this video, updated on one that I had disabled a little over a year ago. Be sure to check out the beginning part of this video for that or the earlier part of this video for that. Uh, I will leave that up. And I just gave the recent update on that truck uh, I'm still waiting for the final conclusion on it, but uh, it sounds like the vlom itself may have failed.
but theoretically it should not come back. Throttle body. I don't know why it is drop saying throttle body. I'm not sure. The, okay, Adam Holmes talking to Ricky, but he says, I got a disabler from Amazon, Diablo Disabler. Now, those disabler units, range, uh, Diablo, things like that, they work as long as your VLOM is still plugged in. I believe they cause problems if you unplug it or gut it. I believe it causes a problem at that point. I think the computer, uh, I recently had a guy saying that he did that and he had the disabler and his computer wasn't allowing full throttle. It was acting like it was in limp mode is basically what he was saying. He just didn't know what limp mode was, I don't think. Uh, but the, I'm going to turn this. This thing's really delaying over here. Uh, or where was it? Oh, but, but the actually turning it off, you can unplug it. It doesn't care if it's unplugged or not when you actually turn it off. The computer basically says, I don't need to see that. I don't give a crap about that, that part of the system. Uh, once you actually officially disable. So officially disabling, it's way better. Furthermore, uh, the disablers themselves, those little devices, say you're getting in and out of your car, you're at the grocery store, for instance, you get your groceries, you get in, your knee bumps the, the disabler, and then it falls to the floor, but you don't notice it because you have your kids or whatever screaming in the back. I don't know. But either way, you don't notice it. It's sitting on the floor. You fire up your vehicle. You take off. You're in town to get back home, and it goes into four-cylinder mode. Now your lifter tick is back. So disablers have their purpose. They're very good for a vehicle that has not had a problem yet to keep it from having a problem. After you have the, except for maybe to get you to a shop to get them. Other than that, don't, don't bother with the disabler. It's not worth it. Mr. Casido, have you ever seen a bad DOD lifter get stuck open, not collapse like usual? I had one and it gave me a dead miss. Yeah, I've had quite a few of those actually. And those, those lifter ticks, uh, you, you, he's saying that he had a tick, but it wasn't actually loose. Uh, basically the oil pressure is being fed or backed up under that tower. Where did I put that now? There it is. I hope the video is going okay for you guys. It's all kinds of glitchy on my end here. Uh, let me know if it's messed up or not. So the tower that sits under here, if you get oil pressure there, it's going to do that exact thing where it will, will collapse when there's pressure applied to it but it'll have enough spring pressure to hold it tight and keep it from ticking basically it's acting just like when the system is enabled but it's not actually enabled it's it's a failure within the vlam unit and it's it's backing up pressure on this end and it should not be backing up pressure there cut these gaskets or go through my vlam my all right we have how much was that? How much was it? Oh, it's a disabler. Yeah, disablers typically run 180 to 220, roughly. Uh, sometimes you can get them for once. A trouble light that doesn't use AA batteries and doesn't suck. All right, I'll get a link for the saber lights that I use. And I've just beaten the crap out of these things, though they are starting to fail on me, finally. So I'll throw you a link, but like this is my oldest one. And this one, you can see, it's, uh, it's like a limp dick over here. It just kind of doesn't do much. It needs some Viagra or something. But this guy has functioned for me for a long time. This light here was yellow for a while. I don't know why that was. The lens cover is missing. But this is like two and a half years old of just total torture. And then the one that I was using earlier, the larger one, that one's been working really good for me for a very long time. And I'll be sure to link, link those lights below because those are really good quality lights for the money. Good bang for the buck. Roger asking for the answer again. Well, you can recap on the video later, too. I will put the video up. I'll see if I can find this question real quick. Amazon. 
After getting the AFM disabled, the lifter problem won't ever come back. Oh. Um, yeah, I'm not going to answer that one again. It was kind of, it, it can, it most likely won't. We'll just put it that way. Go back on the recap, but it can come back. Most likely won't come back. Uh, I talked about it earlier in the show as well as to one that did actually come back after being disabled, but a year and a half later, and it's most likely because he didn't do his oil changes. Uh, it was fully sludged. So we'll, we'll put it that way. All right, let's see here. Hundred and fifty for them to do a delete with HP tuners. Uh, yeah, typically any speed shop is a place to go for having the system disabled with HP tuners or whatever software they may have. Um, and they're typically going to run between one hundred and fifty and two hundred and fifty dollars. If they try charging you three hundred, just kind of be like, "Come on, man, you're just turning one thing off," uh, because the credits are going to cost them a hundred to one hundred and fifty dollars depending on the vehicle, and then. They're going to want something for their time, and they may mark up the credits themselves a little bit, too. I don't know. So just keep that in mind. You know, they, they should not, if they try and go 300 or something, just tell them to, to screw off. They're being ridiculous. They're not actually doing a tune. They're just turning off displacement on demand and registering it to your vehicle. So uh, that's how those HP systems work, by the way, for anyone who doesn't know. So the little HP box, sometimes it's a dongle, sometimes like the one I have, it's the older version, it's an actual box with cables on either end. Uh, that little box gets registered to the exact vehicle that it gets plugged into and unlocked with the credits. Now if you were to go to another tuner or somebody with a different box, then you're going to be stuck with paying for the credits again for that other box is my understanding of it. All right, looks like we are pretty much caught up on the questions. Make sure to uh, hit that like button for me, it helps. And uh, I'm going to continue making some tools, get finished up here, and then uh, hopefully I'll get back to some editing videos if I'm not so dang busy anymore. I've been just so busy lately. So uh, like, share, subscribe. I hope to see you on another video or another live stream. Thanks for watching.